You're looking at a live view of the Dragon Endeavor spacecraft as we await its departure from the International Space Station on its way back to planet Earth. It's Sunday, September 3rd here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. We expect Dragon to push away from the space station at 4.05 a.m. Pacific, 7.05 a.m. Eastern with our Crew-6 astronauts, including NASA's Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg, United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan al Nayadi, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev. The crew is currently suited up and in the Dragon, uh, and the station hatches are sealed and in preparation for departure. Thanks for tuning in to watch live coverage of Dragon completing its sixth official long duration mission for NASA's commercial crew program. For those of you following along, you'll know that the Crew-7 crew arrived just last week and they will be taking over for Crew-6, who is now headed home. My name is Kate Tice, Senior Quality Systems Engineering Manager here at SpaceX. Joining me today from NASA Communications is Gary Jordan. Hey. Welcome. Hey, Kate. Great to be here. Thanks. Once Dragon departs the station, the crew's flight home is expected to last around 17 hours. Shortly after separation, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers, up to five departure burns, to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. Dragon will also exit execute a phasing burn to lower its orbit and line the spacecraft up with its landing location. Next on its trip home is deorbit, entry and landing, which covers all operations after the final departure maneuver. That includes trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and finally, splashdown, all off, off the Florida coast, at which point our teams will recover Steve, Woody, Sultan, and Andre. Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida at 12, excuse me, at 12.26 a.m. Eastern Time, 9.26 p.m. Pacific Time, uh, followed by the crew getting picked up at sea by one of SpaceX's recovery vessels. Today on board the space station is Expedition 69 crew, led by Roscosmos cosmonaut and space station commander Sergei Prokopiev. Of course, just like its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio helped the crew members prepare for departure today and will be watching from the cupola, but the prime departure monitoring role falls on Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg from inside the Dragon. Mission controls in Houston and Hawthorne will back them up. Let's go over to Leah Cheshire at the NASA Johnson Space Center to talk a little bit about how the space station crew has been preparing to send the crew home and what we can expect from here until Dragon departs from the station. Leah. Thanks, Gary, and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The flight control team is primed and ready for this morning's undocking operations. Today's Orbit One team is being led by NASA Flight Director Pooja Jesrani, and the CAPCOM, the person speaking with the astronauts on the International Space Station, is David Brenna. Since Crew-7's arrival just last week, it's been a busy week during our direct handover. Over the last several days, the astronauts worked to pack Dragon full of cargo for the return journey. Along with the crew, Dragon will return cargo back to Earth, which includes some samples for continuing human research and some hardware and other items. Earlier today, Jasmine Mobelli and Andy Mogensen worked to move cold bags and polar freezers, which store cold research samples and scientific experiments, in Dragon Endeavor. 
All of this cargo is offloaded after we get the crew out following splashdown, and those scientific samples will be sent to researchers for final analysis, some of those samples being received by those researchers even within just a few hours after splashdown. The crew also took time to get their SpaceX suits unpacked and ready for their journey home. And since getting the hatches closed this morning, that Dragon hatch closer coming at 6, 9, 4.19 a.m. Central Time, uh, the astronauts are now suited up and in their seats they are standing by for undocking. We have the final go, no go poll coming up in a few minutes where the SpaceX and NASA teams make their final call for Dragon to depart station. This is one of the many checkpoints in the return that continue all the way up until just before the deorbit burn and have happened over the last several days, giving mission managers multiple chances to assess the weather at the splashdown zones and making sure everything lines up for Dragon's departure. So we're standing by for the final go, no go, but right now everything continues to look good for an on-time departure. And with that, I will send it back to Kate and Gary in Hawthorne. Separation Dragon is set for on the big loop. Final reconfigurations for undock are complete and nominal. NASA and SpaceX teams have both pulled go for the undock sequence start at 1100 UTC. Please confirm that your visors are down and crew are ready for undock and departure. SpaceX Endeavor, visors are down, crew is ready to undock. All right, so as we just heard moments ago, we got confirmation that Dragon completed its final configuration uh, and that mission operators are go for uh, the undocking procedure, so that's great. So just like its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board, which is typically faster and easier this time around since the crew won't have the uh, option to stop at waypoints like we see at uh, when the vehicle arrives. Once the undocking sequence is complete, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of five departure burns, which are carefully choreographed maneuvers that will increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. From there, a phasing burn will place Dragon on a trajectory back to Earth. Wrapping up its trip home, Dragon will go through deorbit, entry, and landing, which covers all operations after that final departure maneuver. That includes trunk separation, a deorbit burn, closure of the nose cone, deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and finally, splashdown off the Florida coast, at which point our teams will recover the Crew-6 astronauts inside Dragon from the water. So as we just heard moments ago that mission operators have pulled go for undocking. Um, so as we, you will hear throughout the webcast, um, both <laughs> as we approach the station and depart, everything is very carefully choreographed. There's a series of checks uh, to make sure that we are go to proceed to the next step. And in this case, that next step is undocking. That's right. And that, uh, that will actually uh, initiate the go for undock right at 4 a.m. Pacific time and we're waiting for that undocking sequence to begin. So once that happens, it'll take less than five minutes or so for the Dragon to physically separate from the International Space Station, which has been its home for six months. The first step in the automatic undocking sequence is for the umbilicals to retract. These umbilicals connect Dragon systems to the space station. They transfer power, telemetry, and commands between the two vehicles throughout Dragon's stay. Once that's complete, Dragon will unlatch itself from the space station by releasing the 12 hard capture hooks that, uh, and that will occur in two separate phases. All of that combined will take roughly four and a half minutes. Then Dragon will be ready to depart from station and begin to move itself further and further away by using its thrusters. That's right, Dragon's initial departure from the station is a little different from other docked vehicles like the Soyuz that rely on springs to push them away from the docking port. Dragon executes two short thruster firings to undock using a combination of the 12 Draco engines surrounding the base of the capsule with the first breaking any stiction between Dragon and the docking port and the second slowly backing the spacecraft away and we're expecting the call for the undocking sequence to begin in the next few minutes or so. 
All right, so before they depart the station, let's get to take a moment to get to know the crew that we're bringing home today. First is Captain Steve Bowen, who hails from Cohasset, Massachusetts, and is married with three children. He holds the title of the first U.S. Navy submarine officer to be selected as a mission specialist by NASA. Bowen is also a veteran of three previous NASA space flights, including space shuttle flights on STS-126, 132, and 133. During those missions, he and his crew expanded the living quarters of the International Space Station, delivered an integrated cargo carrier and the Russian mini research module. With this mission, he will have logged an estimated 227 days in space over four flights, including 65 hours and 57 minutes in 10 spacewalks. Today, he's the commander of Crew 6. Sitting next to Stephen is pilot Warren Woody Hoberg. The 37-year-old is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He studied aeronautics and astronautics uh, from MIT before getting a doctorate in electrical engineering and computer science from University of California, Berkeley. During grad school, Hoberg worked as an EMT with the Yosemite Search and Rescue. Crew 6 has been Hoberg's first flight since NASA selected him to be an astronaut in 2017. He is also a commercial pilot with instrument, single engine, and multi-engine ratings. As pilot for Crew 6, he is responsible for spacecraft systems and performance. Aboard the station, he served as an Expedition 68 and 69 flight engineer and is coming home with 186 days in space and 11 hours, 38 minutes of time outside the hatch on two spacewalks. In the role of mission specialist is astronaut Sultan al Niyadi. He was chosen by the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center of the United Arab Emirates to be a part of Expedition 68 and 69. The father of five spent most of his life in Al Alin and Abu Dhabi, but in 2020 traded that in for astronaut training in Houston at the NASA Johnson Space Center. For this, this has been his first trip to space, so he now also has 186 days in orbit. Additionally, he went on one spacewalk, totaling seven hours and one minute. It was also the first trip to space for the second mission specialist, Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev. Andrei was selected as a cosmonaut back in 2012. He will monitor the spacecraft during the dynamic reentry phase of flight. While on board station, he served as a flight engineer for Expedition 68 and 69 and will return to Earth with 186 days uh, of time and space under his belt. That's right, and they'll all be undocking here in just a few minutes. Before they actually uh, undocked, they actually had played a game with the uh, flight operations team on the ground. And just moments before we started this broadcast, they exchanged some words. Here's a replay of that moment. Dragon, Houston, on the big loop. Houston Dragon, go ahead. Hey, we're still about 45 minutes from undock, but before we get busy, we just want to say, wow, can you believe it's already time to leave? We can't. It's been an amazing mission. You've birthed two Cygnuses, or Cygni, <laughs> docked two cargo dragons. You've executed a port relocate, facilitated a private astronaut mission, performed three U.S. EVAs and five Russian EVAs, copious amounts of critical science, as well as your fair share of maintenance, stowage, and rack swaps. And uh, we didn't really want to mention it, but you also mastered us in chess a few times, too. So you're truly space kings. You've done an incredible job, and to say it's been a pleasure to support you guys during this mission would be an understatement. Let's send you guys home. Thank you very much. It's been a real privilege and an honor to be up here for this expedition uh, as it continues. And uh, we're coming up on 23 years of continuous occupation of the International Space Station, which is absolutely amazing. It's just a, a real privilege to be a part of it. It has been an amazing mission. Of this, uh, the Expedition 69 crew has been above and beyond, and I've had the privilege of uh, Watching it all happen, I really think this has uh, been amazing. And thank you, Houston, and thank the uh, Mission Control and everybody on the on the ground, the entire team from Scuba, Huntsville, Munich, Moscow, uh, the entire team coming together and making ensuring that our expedition was smooth and safely completed. It's uh, really been an honor. Thank you.
So for those of you just turning, to, excuse me, for those of you just tuning in, uh, we are standing by for the command of the undocking sequence. Um, again, this is an uh, an autonomous sequence that Dragon performs once commanded to do so. Um, Undock sequence commanded. And right on. Right on time, there's that call we were standing by for to uh, basically command uh, Dragon to begin the undocking sequence. Uh, with Dragon now getting ready to undock, let's head over to Leah in Mission Control at Johnson Space Center. Thanks, Kate. And as you mentioned, and as we heard the core and crew Umbilical confirm, the and undock normal. has been Undock has been commanded, and the umbilical, which provided power to Dragon from the International Space Station, has been detached as well. Now the undock command has been sent. However, we are standing by. This process takes a few minutes. This is a process of two sets of six hooks each, so 12 hooks in total that we'll need to retract. Those first set of hooks are in motion. We will be looking for a confirmation when that's complete before the second set begins retracting as well. We're expecting time of physical separation to be at 6.05 a.m. Central Time, 7.05 a.m. Eastern Time. Quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the departure of Dragon Endeavor. About three more minutes until we see physical separation. Those first set of hooks continue to retract. First set of hooks open and nominal. The crew operations and resources engineer in Hawthorne, California at SpaceX Mission Control communicating with the team aboard Dragon Endeavor. Our crew six astronauts coming home today, Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg of NASA, Sultan Anayati of the United Arab Emirates, and Andre Fedyaya of Roscosmos. The second set of six hooks continues to retract. After those hooks are fully open, we will see two short burns known as undock burn one and two, both just a few seconds long, that will break the stiction or the attachment of Dragon to the International Space Station. Again, we're looking at that in about one minute. Second set of hooks continue to retract. Yeah. 
standing by for undock burns one and two. All hooks open and nominal. We're proud to see the same. Dragon separation is confirmed. At 6.05 a.m. Central Time and after 184 days on the International Space Station, Dragon has departed the orbiting laboratory, traveling 256 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean. Depart burn zero complete. We saw the two Take successful undock burns, Take one care. and two again, both. Both of the undock burns just a couple of seconds long, as well as confirmation that the depart burn is complete as well. And with the successful undocking, again, that coming at 6.05 a.m. Central Time, right on time, Dragon, Endeavour, and Crew-6 begin their journey back to Earth. We're still monitoring from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here in Houston, but to give us perspective from the other side of the operations, I'll toss it back to Gary and Kate in Hawthorne. All right, thank you, Leah, for taking us through that. Yeah, we had physical separation right on time, 4.05 a.m. Pacific Time, 7.05 a.m. Eastern Time. You can see we're at a nighttime view as the station and Dragon pass over the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so we're just seeing the, uh, through the middle window there inside the lit cabin inside the Dragon as well as the navigation lights, starboard being green and port being red as Dragon increases its separation distance from the International Space Station, about 45 meters and going back. Depart zero after the two undocking burns to physically separate and increase the distance from the docking ring. Depart zero takes, uh, will send Dragon outside the keep out sphere. Keep out sphere uh, has its own set of rules, is a, is a line about 200 meters away from the International Space Station. So we'll get right outside of that and we'll wait towards uh, depart burn one. Depart burn one. Uh, we'll send Dragon outside the approach ellipsoid. You can see the graphic here. Uh, Dragon will, Dragon's trajectory will take it zenith. It'll take it uh, above the International Space Station. Uh, and from there, it will slow down until it executes to part burn two, which allows the Dragon to uh, decrease its altitude and get to a trajectory about 10 kilometers uh, below the International Space Station in a co-elliptic orbit. For this particular trajectory to meet up with the landing location, the prime location of Jacksonville, Florida, uh, the trajectory allows for five departure burns. So we'll see that executed over the next 17 hours until splashdown. We do have a correction to that splashdown time. We're aiming for 12.17 a.m. Eastern time, uh, which is 9.17 p.m. Pacific time. And that's again off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. Continuing to increase separation distance, we're at about 78 meters from the International Space Station. I love this view that we have. Um, it might be a little confusing uh, if you're just looking at it, wondering what all the dots are. Um, <laughs> the lights that we see actually moving on screen uh, is Dragon itself. Um, the red and green represent the port and the starboard, starboard side. That white light in the center is actually uh, an interior light shining through the forward hatch of the capsule. Um, so if we um, would have been able to perform a fly around maneuver, that is actually one of the windows that they would have been using to uh, take photos. That's right, and with the nighttime views, you can actually see some of the pixels uh, that have uh, 
been, uh, they're actually dead pixels. They sort of look like very colorful Christmassy yeah. light stars, but it's actually dead pixels on the camera that uh, have been uh, uh, hit by some radiation in space. And this is pretty normal for some of the cameras that we see in space. There's actually programs within the camera that allow um, the, uh, there's software within it that allow us to, uh, to, to fix some of the imperfections of those uh, uh, of those pixels, uh, but those are not stars. Those are those are pixels of the camera. So, for those of you that have recently joined the webcast, um, the Crew Six crew are there inside Dragon that we see on screen. Uh, they are in their spacesuits. They are in their seats. Um, it's been a long morning stepping through all the the checks uh, in preparation for the event that we just had, which was Dragon Separation. Um, we also executed the first of our five departure burns, uh, and we're now standing by uh, for, de uh, for departure burn one. We're expecting that around 4.10, which is right now, a.m. Pacific. Um, so there's this graphic that we have to kind of give you an idea of uh, the different areas that we're looking at when we're talking about the International Space Station, what it takes to to depart. Oh, uh, this is an awesome view. You can actually see lights from those Draco thrusters as they fire. That's the part burn one. It's about a 21 second burn and you can see it executing right now. Great to have this nighttime shot to actually see those Draco thruster firings. Absolutely. We hear depart burn one is complete and nominal. That's a good depart burn one. Again, that sends that sends a trajectory of Dragon outside the keep out sphere and approach ellipsoid. We'll continue our coverage until Dragon exits the approach ellipsoid, which will end uh, joint operations between the Dragon and uh, team Dragon teams here in Hawthorne and the International Space Station flight control teams in Houston. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Depart burn one is complete and nominal, and with that, you are go to doff your suits per procedure four decimal zero one two, and I'll go ahead and take the cameras external. And just a reminder that ground will be deactivating the big loop following exit from the approach ellipsoid. is moving into suit bouncing. Thank you for the cameras. And uh, thank you, ISS. Uh, it's been an amazing six months. It's Crew 7, the 69 for you. It's continuing our finish at 69 and into 70. Uh, enjoy your visit, and we'll talk to you back on Earth. And Dragon Station, we copy. We're going to miss you guys, uh, but it's good to see you go and get get back to your families. Uh, great job on the mission. Godspeed, and uh, we'll see you uh, splashing down safely here in about 17 hours. Great job. All right, to recap some of the exchange there, that was from inside the Dragon, Commander Steve Bowen, uh, sending some congratulatory words for a successful separation and exit of the keep out sphere. Frank Rubio from inside the station saying farewell of the big loop. This is an audio configuration that allows both teams on the ground, the teams in Houston as well as Hawthorne, and the two spacecraft in orbit, the Dragon and the International Space Station, all to talk on one communication loop. Saying farewell to their crew, they're now outside the keep out sphere, and the next step is the approach ellipsoid. They just got the um, cue to doff their suits because that. Uh, next burn, depart burn two, is not going to happen for another five zero minutes. Gary, you mentioned the keep out sphere. Um, for those that might be unfamiliar with uh, approaching or departing the International Space okay, Station, uh, it is an imaginary sphere. <laughs> Obviously nothing physical out there. Um, but it's, as you can see there on your screen, um, as the name indicates, that is the sphere um, that you have to have, um, you know, uh, there's a check to uh, enter the keep out sphere as you approach the International Space Station. Um, it's basically this imaginary sphere about 200 meters all around the International Space Station. And uh, as Gary just said, uh, we are now out of it. That's right, and that next sphere outside of that uh, is the approach ellipsoid. Each of them has sort of a, um, a set of its own rules, uh, the keep out sphere and then the approach ellipsoid. That approach ellipsoid is uh, four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers. Uh, and once the spacecraft is outside of that uh, imaginary line, it 
has to be on what's called a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. So that means the spacecraft wouldn't cross into the approach ellipsoid and risk any recontact with the International Space Station for at least 24 hours, even if it lost all maneuvering. So again, continuing to track Dragon on its departure from the International Space Station. We had separation at 4.05 a.m. Eastern Time, exactly right on time. And again, we'll continue our coverage through the spacecraft's exit of the approach ellipsoid. We're still um, in an orbital nighttime. SpaceX Endeavour, com check from the cabin mic. And again, the big, yeah, we have you loud and clear as well. The big loop configuration allows, again, the two spacecraft in orbit, the Dragon that you see from this screen from one of the cameras on board the International Space Station. It's hard to see because we are in an orbital nighttime, so you can just see the navigation lights as well as the lights uh, from the interior of the cabin through the center window there with the open nose cone. Uh, but everyone is talking, and that's part of the configuration once we're inside these joint operations spheres. We've been talking about the keep out sphere, the approach ellipsoid. That big loop will be deconfigured uh, shortly after exiting the approach ellipsoid, and the Dragon crew will just be operating on what's called Dragon to Ground. It's a communication link between the inside the Dragon capsule and the teams here in Mission Control in Hawthorne. As we heard before, the crew got the okay to doff or take off their suits. Uh, this allows them to be um, a little bit more comfortable in their seats and um, as we go through the next phases, as you also heard on comms, it's about a 17 hour trip from undock to splashdown. Uh, so they don't need to wear their suits the whole time. And so right now we are uh, tracking Dragon uh, here on this shot and uh, the crew is doffing their suits and uh, standing by for the next phase. Once again, we are uh, standing by to exit the approach ellipsoid, uh, which as Gary mentioned, another imaginary shape out there by the ISS, um, measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers. And big difference between it and the keep out sphere is that um, the, uh, the approach ellipsoid, uh, the vehicles ha outside it have to be on uh, a 24 hour safe free trajectory, uh, meaning that the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, um, even if it lost all maneuvering capability. So we can see those dots from Dragon, those exterior lights uh, getting further and further away. We were able to see the Draco engines um, firing as they were performing uh, departure burn number one. And again, those departure burn zero and one allow the spacecraft to exit those two spheres. Uh, Kate and I have been talking about the keep out sphere and approach ellipsoid. We're hearing from the teams, the flight control teams that are monitoring uh, Dragon's progress that the spacecraft has exited the approach ellipsoid. So again, the crew is uh, has doffed their suits. It allows uh, a little bit more comfort as they begin their journey, which will take more than 17 hours from the time of undocking uh, to the time they actually touch down in the Atlantic coast. It'll allow them time to eat, to sleep, to be comfortable and, and enjoy the ride, so. Take their last looks at planet Earth from uh, their vantage point. That's right, exactly. 
Well, now that NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg, Emirati uh, astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi, and Roscosmos astronaut Andrei Fedyaev have departed the International Space Station, as you can see with that great half-lit shot there on your screen, um, it will take them about 17 hours and until they're back on Earth. The crew is currently doffing their spacesuits to settle in for the flight home. Uh, and today, Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida, as Gary just said, at 9.17 p.m. Pacific on September 3rd, or 12.17 a.m. Eastern, September 4th. And that will be followed by the crew getting picked up at sea by one of the SpaceX recovery vessels. As they rest up, our teams here will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return to Earth for Dragon and our Crew-6 astronauts. And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is wrapping up for tonight, we will turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew-6 mission. Our friends at the Johnson Space Center will provide continuous live audio-only coverage along Crew-6's journey home until we rejoin approximately an hour prior to splashdown. You can find the audio-only link by visiting nasa.gov live and clicking the mission audio link or by searching NASA's mission audio live feed on YouTube. Meanwhile, we will rejoin for live visual coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. As always, you can find mission updates on X at, at NASA, at SpaceX, and on the web at nasa.gov. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you real soon.